Good morning, everyone. I offer you a meditation on 45 minutes. So let me lay the scene for you. I stop at Starbucks here in town in Grand Haven here on most mornings. I stop there enough to have a regular drink that they always know I'm going to order, and they even know my name. I arrive most mornings around 7 a.m. with my reusable cup because, you know, I am doing my part, all that good stuff. And I've collected enough rewards there that I could have drinks for free for two full weeks that I never use. But this past Thursday was a little different. Winter had come and it was cold. There was snow. And oh, it was one that one day of the year known as Red Cup Day. It's this annual holiday thing that they do with the holiday themed beverages and the cups. And oh yeah, you get the free reusable red cup. I will tell you this, people love the free red cups. Most mornings I arrive and place my regular drink in person. I never use that mobile order ahead stuff. I just like being there in person. So Thursday morning I pull in, I notice the line at the drive through is a little long. I noted it. And I go in and find not one or two people waiting, but a lot. I mean, a football team's amount of people. Oh, it won't be too bad, I thought. And so I went ahead and ordered. And then it began. When waiting, there is always this awkwardness. Where do you stand? Where do you wait? I don't want to appear like I'm paying too close of attention to the baristas that are working. So I'm inclined to always go into a corner away from others. It's my default setting. But as I looked around and counted a rough head count of 15, 16 people, I was left standing at the counter where I ordered, right in front of everyone. So occasionally glance at my phone to distract and perhaps to show that I must be really important because I'm texting so many people and reading the news and oh yes, playing Wordle. It's what we do in the times we look at our phones. I glance up and see the room is now filled with more people, quick count, 24. Names being called out from baristas that so-and-so's drink is ready, but no one's collecting them because of those darn mobile orders people order and then don't come and get them right away. Meanwhile, those who are here waiting, wait. It's ridiculous, I think to myself. I glance at my watch, hmm, been about 15 minutes, but no worries, patience is a virtue. 25 minutes in, a woman ends up standing next to me. She, we smile cordially at each other, lots of, can you believe this, glances. It does not feel like things are progressing. I look at the employees, and I've gotten to know these employees. They're all working so hard, so I go into the app, and I add more money to the tip. In many ways, this is consumerism hell, waiting, waiting, waiting. It is easy to begin to feel neg negativity. Many times I thought that I should just go in and cancel the drink and get to my office. A drink isn't worth all this, and I already have a lot of reusable cups. I don't need any more. I don't need any of this. But there is that persistent ego. I want my drink. The key word in that is my. I look around. People are ordering these extravagant drinks that take longer. Some people, oh my gosh, so help me, are ordering six drinks. There's this one guy who ordered right behind me. I just could not stop paying attention to him. I looked at him and I thought, okay, what is he doing? Full disclosure, I'm in drink. So forgive me. This guy, I thought, probably voted for the person I voted against. I bet you a cup of coffee he did. 
this guy a $160 order with multiple drinks and a big carafe of coffee and sandwiches and pastries. And oh my God, just read the, read the room, buddy. Look what's going on. I can't believe you. So I hear this voice. I have patience this morning. I hope I'm not late. And it's this woman next to me in my spot. Oh, I say, I don't think it'll be too much longer and go back to my phone. Probably saying this more to myself than to her. Yeah, probably not, she says. She continues, how far do you have to drive to work? Oh, I'm only about 15 minutes, I say. It's not too bad, and it's okay if I'm a little late. I'm only in sales, I laugh. Nothing as important as seeing, as a, pa seeing a patient, and she smiles back. She says, yeah, this morning there are several tough patients. It will be one of those days, I think. And she offered this smile full of compassion and what appeared to be sorrow. The barista calls out, I have an order for Emily, and I'm not Emily. A woman goes to the counter and asks if she can just cancel her drink. I honestly think her, the name on her badge, is, if I saw it right, really was Karen. <laughs> they explain to her how to cancel, and she leaves. And so I think, one less order in my way. Oh, and this woman next to me, too. Her drink, too. She needs to go, too. The woman next to me says, a lot of or large orders, aren't there? Yeah, I say, probably not the best day for that with the free cups and all. But it does kind of make me feel festive, I offer a small talk. Oh, me too, she says. The last few years haven't been easy with all that stuff. And I pause, because I don't know what to say. Commenting on recent times can be a landmine in waiting if you say the wrong thing to the wrong person. Oh my gosh, yes, I say. It's been tough. I'm hoping for a better holiday this season and keenly aware of that I'm saying holiday and not Christmas. Just then, the guy with the $160 order puts his bag of things on a table right next to us. He has his baked goods and some sandwiches and napkins and such, but not his drinks. We look over and smile. Going to be a minute, he says. I smile and nod. He is fumbling around his pockets for his keys, I think, and glancing outside and says, Maybe I'll just bring this stuff to my car, speaking out loud. The woman next to me, well, we can keep an eye on your other stuff so you can go do that. That would be a big help, he says. Thank you. And he leaves with some of the bags, returning to grab more with a smile. Thanks again, he says, looking our way. He comes back. Crazy morning. We all smile and agree. He says, I wanted to surprise my coworkers by bringing them all drinks and stuff. Wrong morning for that, he says, laughs. Again, reminder, I am a jerk, a judgmental jerk. So nice of you, that will make their day, the woman next to me says. Just then, another person comes standing and says hello to the woman next to me. So good to see you, it's been too long. I hear them talk about their kids and their family. She then says, pointing at me. We have just been standing here chanting it up as we wait. The new, the new woman says, nice to meet you. Hello. I smile to her and say hello to you too. So I look around again and it's a full room. People are chatting with those nearby, with those nearby probably just talking about waiting, maybe a little small talk, but not many on their phones scrolling or shooting darts at the barista who come, who look like they're about to cry. There was so much going on in that room. I hear, I have an order for Michael. Next up is David. Oh, that's me, I say to the folks around me. I look at my watch. It's been 40-some minutes. So nice to chat with you today, David, the woman next to me says, for she now knows my name. But I realize I do not know hers. You as well, I say. Thanks for making this a lot less unpleasant. I hope you make it in time for your patience, I say. She says, thank you. Her friend says, nice to meet you. And I say, thank you, you as well. The $160 guy puts his hand on my shoulder and says, thanks again, man. I say, no problem. I weave my way to the front counter in time for them to hand me my personal cup and receive the free red holiday cup that at that moment I decided I would give to my coworker who was never able to stop in the morning.
the barista who knows my name says, have a great day, David. I say, you too. In my car, I text the office saying, I'll be a few minutes late. I find the holiday playlist on the music. 45 minutes. I didn't plan on that time that morning. 45 minutes better spent elsewhere, right? Like at my work, being productive and chasing that ever-present. I'll get caught up, list of tasks. I spend 20 minutes each way, each morning, driving to work. Each morning, I get mad when stuck behind those other drivers, as we call them. It's easy to get mad or stressed out these days. Just this morning, reading about a shooting at a gay club in Colorado with at least five people killed and 18 injured, and we still don't know why. I can imagine why. Six feet of snow in Buffalo, New York. I don't know if I can imagine that. The internet of horrors will give you all you need to make you feel helpless, angry, sad, or insert whatever feeling here. When I got into my car and the holiday music played, I find myself singing along. As I passed by Robin's Road, I wondered about that woman and her patients. She was so nice. I sent out some good energy to her and her patients. I imagine that $160 man bringing his bag of treats and trays of drinks and his coworkers being so happy. 45 minutes. I suppose they can be whatever we make them. I sing on into the morning. Through the years, we all will be together. If the fates allow, here's to choosing goodness for us all.